Good evening, everybody. Got a warm, not a warm, but a rainy night here in Pittsburgh. It's kind of a good night to be inside. All right. We're going to just kind of go through some observations that are always uh, kind of universal when it comes to candlestick analysis. So if you take a gander here at what started the uptrend, this latest uptrend, that was our best friend, Doji Gap Up, stayed above the T-line. And what started some of the selling? A gap up in the overbought area. So this is why once we saw this, we said, watch out. Start looking for some profit taking. Now, there's a difference between a profit taking and a reversal, which is notice the selling on Thursday was not a reversal. It was just a down day and an uptrend. No signal here. If it was a dark cloud, it needed to open above this level. Uh, bullish or bearish engulfing needed to close below the previous day's open. So all it was was selling in an uptrend. Well, that should be the probabilities. Had it been a reversal signal, that would have been a much more compelling reason to think maybe they're starting to sell it off. Notice the next couple of trading days, dojis, which if we know what the characteristic of each signal is, tells us there's no real definitive selling, just kind of indecisive selling. Up here in the NASDAQ, we're still in an uptrend. However, we closed just below the T-line, stochastics heading down. But the doji gives us a much more clear, uh, oh, what do I say, evaluation of what they're going to do with the market tomorrow. If we wake up and the pre-market futures are positive tomorrow, that tells us probably this uptrending channel is still in progress. And the transportation index, not telling us too much of anything. Very, very slow uptrend. Not, not any real great direction. Uh, it could come back down to this level, but right now there isn't any decisive selling. So, that puts us in a situation where you probably want to have both longs and shorts in the portfolio. Now, things like uh, oh, uh, CLSD closed back below the T-line today with indecisiveness. That's So this is kind of one of those uh, charts that even though it started looking or started off well, there's a time when you want to be back out of a trade that's not working. And I say this uh, with the kind of the, uh, oh, what do I say, the aspect that put on a trade, it's working for four or five days, and then all of a sudden it sells off. There's always an inclination to say, well, it's working. Let's give it a little bit more time, see if it heads back up. That does two things to your thinking. One, it's, uh, you're in a situation where the probabilities are against you now. You shouldn't be there. And two, when you keep your money there, you're not moving it someplace that has probabilities that look like this. So you're kind of kind of uh, chewing up your mental analysis uh, capabilities and putting your money or keeping your money in something that's not going to be uh, as uh, has a probability of making you money. You diminish the probabilities. Now, looking at something like the recommendation on NOVN today was based upon this fry pan bottom. They gapped it up. So a lot of people are saying, well, I bought up here and I bought up here. Is, this, is, is that is there something I should do? Yes. We don't know one simple rule of the fry pan bottom. You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. What else do we know about a fry pan bottom? Usually they break out pretty strong. So uh, 
we should still be in the uh, mode of if it starts trading positive tomorrow, you want to be buying aggressively because now you know what type of, of uh, situation you have. Fry pan bottom at the breakout level, a doji sandwich telling you there's more upside. And the reason this one is so attractive is that if this gets moving, there's no resistance in here. Your first target should be all the way up to the 50-day uh, moving average. We also recommended CYH because it was kind of doing a little key line crunch, kind of a bottle pattern. It was waffling here at the 200. Notice what it did today. It sold off right back to the 200 and then traded back up. This definitely you want to be buying on positive trading because then you have a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. So, again, this is not anything where we're, we're just kind of assessing what human nature usually does. and We've got a lot of uh, indicators to show us what's happening, what everybody else is watching or doing at a specific moving average or resistance level. This one is your classic. Um, the light gray line is your 3T line, 3 exponential moving average. And it becomes much more, uh, uh, what do I say, effective the further away you move from the T line. Now notice what happened here. This is kind of just breaking down. The black line is the eight exponential moving average. Yes, that's your T line. Uh, what happened here? Well, you're kind of in a trading range, and then bam. They opened it way up here, but then sold it off. Most people will say, well, that's not good. They failed up here. Well, the real truth of the matter is they came in here with power buying, took it way up. There's lots of profit taking. And even after the profit taking, it closed up 35% on the day. But what was the message here? that they came in with great force on this to move it up. So what do we have the benefit of seeing? Signals that tell us when the selling has stopped. In this case, Friday there was a bullish Harami. What's a bullish Harami tell us? The selling has stopped. So what do we look for the next day, like today? If they open up positive, you can be buying because the force was already indicated with this message Profit taking going on. Now the profit taking is over. This force should still be in effect that uh, there's going to be a lot more upside. So let's see what we got here. Oh. NVIDIA still in a downtrend. So. Not only in this market, these market conditions should you be both long and short. Oh, that's not what I want to say. In these market conditions, you should be both long and short. Is a bull harami stronger at the end of a down trend than an uptrend? Uh, definitely. But it still gives you the same message that a bullish harami pretty much tells you the previous day's trend, whether it was one day or one day of selling, has stopped. But like every other candlestick signal, very simply stated, a candlestick buy signal is most effective when it's being witnessed in an oversold area. A candlestick sell signal is most effective when it's in an overbought area. A candlestick sell signal doesn't mean nearly as much if anything, if it's in the oversold area. Okay. Uh, I've been skipping around here. Things like KEM. Been in a nice uptrend for a while. Big move to the upside, 45 degree. So how long do you hang on to this one? There's a sell signal. Should we get ready to sell? 
remember our rule of a 45 degree, same as a fry pan bottom. You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Uh, there's been a few of them that have taken hard profits here in the last few days. This is, again, the evidence of a uh, more of a belt hold type signal. Notice how when they brought it back down, they basically brought it right, almost right back into the trading range with stochastics heading down. If this was a breakout uh, message, what should we have seen the next day? Something to tell us that the selling had, had stopped. When it opened lower today, not only if you'd been in this uptrend, should you have been out of this position, because where did it close on, on Friday? Below the T-line. BLPH, nice little J-hook pattern. Not a very high price stock, but percentage move could be fairly substantial. So look where this came from. That slow fry pan bottom breakout. These are always nice to, uh, are always good to know what that pattern breakout uh, is occurring. So that usually tells you something has been building up and then finally broke out to the um, upside. AMKR should be uh, on the recommended list because what are all the elements that we can put into this chart analysis? And this is what I call convergence analysis. First of all, you've got something that looks like a fry pan bottom. Secondly, you've got a bobble breakout where they're breaking out through the 50. Third, it started back up on a morning star signal. Fourth, you kind of have a doji sandwich or a double doji sandwich. And today, notice where they brought it back to. They brought it right back to the 50, acted as support, and took it higher. What's that tell us? This whole thing is telling us they're building up uh, steam, that you probably want to be a buyer of this one on positive trading tomorrow. And... M-A-C-K. Start to look at a little slow curve doji sandwich. You're right out right here in about the breakout area. You can be buying this one too. Now, again, we don't usually recommend uh, stocks that are below $5 just because of the lack of margin ability. But for those of you that like to trade the lower price stocks, this looks like it's got a good set up. Matt or Nano. This is, uh, I will put this up here because what usually happens coming out of a fry pan bottom, if it doesn't break out right away, there's usually like a whipsaw right in here. Then notice what they did today. They gapped it up. I'd be a buyer of this one with the expectation you could have a fairly strong uh, price move coming off of here. And Kiwi, this is one that we made good money. There was our signal up here to get ready to take profits on your hanging man signal. Holds back. Now look what type of signals we have down here. This is, again, the, just kind of the neon sign to say there's your signal in the overbought area. If it starts trading lower, take profits. There's your signal down here getting toward the oversold area. Doji, hammer, bullish confirmation. And there's your kind of your three soldiers, three white soldiers. So you've got indecision, and then you've got a strong buy signal. The three white soldiers, not common, but it's something you always want to keep in the back of your mind or recognize. A bullish candle. Next day they open it slightly lower, bullish candle. Next day they open it slightly lower, bullish candle. What's it telling you every time they open it? They're taking out some of the profit taking and then taking it right back up again. Plus, what's your overall chart look like? Wave one, wave two, J hook pattern, wave three getting started. Now the reason uh, again, right now there is uh, 
Well, still a lot of good bullish charts. Here's ATVI. Where is it right now? Right at the breakout level. Possible wave one going into wave three. And HLIT. Kind of your same scenario here where you've got a big fry pan bottom. Let's make this smaller. Big fry pan bottom. And you're almost, see if I can do this, you're almost at the breakout level. What is really compelling is if you wake up and they've gapped this one open, you want to be buying immediately because that means they've gapped through the resistance level, breaking out of a fry pan bottom. That's where your uh, uh, where your big price move is going to start. And CNCE. Well, well, well there we go. I put this one up because. You can see the breakout, and right now we're getting ready to do a, uh, a four-stage video training on the most powerful uh, price moves using candlesticks, and one of them is this, the doji gap up. Then it's usually got a very strong price move after that. And I, I don't have a list of them right now, but... I mean, I could show you a list of 20 that have gapped up like this and then continued higher. So if that's the high probability results, a lot of people say, well, shoot, there's so many good charts. How do I know which ones to go after? And this is why we want to educate people on what the results are, the expected results are from candlestick patterns like your best friend, what the expected results are. If you, uh, you, if you don't want to watch every single pattern signal, uh, pick out two or three. Your best friend, maybe your fry pan bottom breakout, maybe your uh, J-hook pattern. You know, if you just pick those three to get started, you probably wouldn't have to go to too many others because you'd probably be constantly making money, uh, not only money but big money uh, with those just kind of identifying those uh, those patterns themselves uh, uh, that's great to have that right there but notice your little J hook pattern set up here's your morning star signal where's your next likely target wave one wave three bringing you up here SUPN, I uh, put this one on here because this is where you want to uh, kind of have your eye constantly trained to watch for what the everybody else is watching, what patterns. Notice you got kind of a, what's your wedge formation? And they break out of your wedge formation. Try to think which one it was that did that before. Well, let's think. I think it was CENX. CENX kind of. Broke out of this kind of wedge type setup produce this type of run. Charles, it's probably me just hemming and hawing. So you want to look for something that uh, says, all right, there's a new dynamic that's coming to this. I might have another strong run. So um, I still not too far out of the range of where you can still be buying it with maybe the prospect that your next moves to the top of the channel, taking you up in about the $35 range. 
Oh, let's see. EDC. Yeah, and there's that big gap up, your best friend. Notice it consolidated today and then took it up. Let's get rid of that little thing. Where do you think your first likely target is going to be? Probably up another 10% hitting this range. But now you have a big island reversal down here with your doji best friend gap up. Yeah, these are the type that have a lot of follow through. And uh, the G. Uh, again, fry pan bottom, then a whipsaw. I'd be watching this one. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. And then just make sure in the next couple of days it breaks up through this level. So anytime you have this fry pan bottom, it usually breaks out. Or a lot of times they'll do a lot of whipsawing right here. And then it takes off. AVXS, notice your little scoop pattern, right? Smack dab off the 50. I wouldn't be buying it here, but I want to illustrate. When you see this scoop pattern setting up, which is very easy to see when you see your morning star signal and there's a flat handle, it kind of acts like your mini scoop. And RH, another J-hook pattern setting up off the uh, 200. And notice how this uptrend got started with this kicker signal. Wave one, wave three should bring you back up into testing the highs. I'll take a look at AAOI. Yeah, so bearish Harami. So you get, you know that's a potential sell signal. I'd have a sell stop right here or maybe right here, that if they start selling this off tomorrow, close it out. All right, the biggies, like Netflix, also had the uh, setup of kind of that little mini scoop. Flat handle, warning star type signal. This one you can start buying with the uh, prospect of it coming back up to the top of the range, giving you about a nine point move to the upside. Tesla is just dead in the water because it's stuck between the T-line and the 50. I wouldn't do anything with this right now. It wouldn't be short. It wouldn't be long. Just no no direction indication yet. I want to see it close back up above the T-line uh, before going after it. Apple just kind of steady eddy to the upside. Nothing to do there except stay uh, long. And Amazon needed to get back up above the T-line. It's getting a little bit soggy here. When I say a little bit soggy, when it starts looking like there's no direction, can't tell which way it's going from this point, you shouldn't be in it. Should we wait to see which way they're indicating their, which way they're going to take it? Now on the other side, on the short side, there's your bearish. J hook pattern. You're in a downtrend. The T line's been acting as resistance. Bullish and golfing told you the selling has stopped. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. Now, what's our usual watching criteria when they gap it down like this and start bringing it back up? You always hear me say, watch to see what they do when they get back to the T line. Looks like they failed the T line. So, what's that kind of telling you? The downtrend is still in progress, and your next likely target could be coming down through the lows, taking you down into about the $45 or $43 area. What we really want to watch is things that set up for big price move to the downside. Moving very slowly here. Like working as well as I thought it should be. So let's go to EPRO. See how it was rolling over? Then your shooting star gapped down. What's your significant feature here? They gapped it down through this support level. 
Well, for crying out loud, that one's not coming up. That was just to illustrate a slow curve rollover and a big slam to the downside. And T-E-L-L, -L, this is kind of observe the obvious. Uh, the big bearish engulfing signal, they couldn't bring it back up, and they brought it back down through the T-line. Where's your next likely target? Probably back to the 50s. So if you were in it, you should have been out of it today because it needed to open positive and trade positive. The fact that they brought it down through the T-line said they're going to the next uh, support level. Is the 20 a simple moving average is important to 50 and the 200 interims of support and resistance? Uh, when do we use it effectively? It becomes a lot more effective if you see a very strong, steady uptrend. Not chopping around like this. Uh, I'm trying to think of one. But the stronger and more steady the uptrend is, the more likely they'll start using the 20 as support versus coming all the way back to the 50. So it's not out of the, uh, the, the 50, the 200, the 20 is the least uh, uh, crucial. It's, it's more of a support level at, at, in a regular steady eddy uptrend. What did I just do? I just did tell. SGY. That doesn't look the same for some reason, but more than likely, they're bringing that back all the way down. So this is one where you had the message, and you wait to see when the next buy signal has occurred, and it hasn't. So, so far, they come back down through the low that day. I'm suspecting they'd be coming back down to test the 50-day moving average. So, again, that's a good element of candlestick analysis to see what the candle signals are telling you and where the next where the next likely targets are going to be. Copy over here, shooting star gap down. Very simple. If this opens lower, they're probably coming at least back down to the 50, maybe even uh, back down into the bottom of this trend channel. Let's see if they make this smaller. They've got kind of a trend channel set up here. So that means they could bring it that back here. When I say they could bring it back down in this area, if this is a strong sell signal, that'll look to where everybody else is probably watching. First, they're going to see if it supports at the 50. Then there's your your lows, recent lows. That means people could sell it off to that level because that's where the lows were before, and that's where it might go back to. Not that we're trying to extrapolate where the uh, next target is based on any magic, it's more just seeing where everybody else thinks the, the bottom might be. Uh, this one, NTNX, was more to illustrate that big doji gap down. Again, your best friend to the upside takes it up further. Your, do your best friend to the downside usually takes it down further. And ENDP, this is we observe the obvious. The obvious is you can pretty much draw a line right down through the tops here. Pretty much tell that the 50-day moving average was acting as your resistance. You can see the sell signal here. So where's your next likely target? Right down to the bottom of this channel. So this gives you a much more clear analysis of where your resistance levels are and where is your support levels. And which direction is it going to get there? Plus, notice what we had today, kind of a do bearish doji sandwich. And what do we anticipate from a bearish doji sandwich? More downside. And BKD, another kind of slow curve. Failure up here at the 200. And where do people start selling? longer they keep selling, the more panicky they get. Um, so this one, I wouldn't be shorting here, but this is the type where, this is where they start selling hard is when everybody's bailing out. You're down here in the oversold area, so you watch to see when that selling uh, ends. Uh, we were, we're still short.
Still short grub. Um, nothing yet. I mean, it's getting indecisive down here, but no buy signals yet. NVIDIA also still in a downtrend, even though it's getting indecisive. Still nothing yet to show you that there's any buying coming in. And these aren't difficult analysis to make to when they go short. Before the bearish engulfing signal occurred, after a little gap up doji, and if you keep putting all the elements that we know, that when you see a gap up in the overbought condition, start watching for selling. Bearish engulfing signal, where did this occur? After a few days of indecision, where did it end up? Close below the T-line. You can be going short. Might have covered right in here. But then, then what do you have again? Doji gap down, your best friend. And this is uh, where we were illustrating uh, last week of your non-signal. Notice this signal right here. Kind of still in the trading range. But it didn't do a reversal signal. A reversal signal would have been a piercing signal closing more than halfway up this candle. So what do we assess or evaluate when we see a non-signal? There's probably going to be a bounce, but it's probably you want to be a little bit more diligent when you see it get to the first resistance level, like at the T line, and it started selling off from there. You stay short. Tara. You could have seen a sell signal. The only reason I'd be a little bit suspect, first of all, it used the 3T line as support. Secondly, look where your stochastics are. They're close to the overbought area, but they're not in the overbought area. And what type of pattern are we expecting coming out of this whole uh, big chart pattern? Fry pan bottom, pull back, J-hook pattern, your classic. So if this is wave one, I would still suspect we're looking at 21 or 22 to the upside. Hold on to your individual ones uh, until we get uh, done, which we're getting close here. Navistar, same scenario. What's happening at the 50? Failures. Here's your doji gap down. What's this type of pattern? Very scoop pattern. What could be the slingshot effect? down here to the bottom of this channel or down here in the fit or the 200 day moving average area. And PG, PVG, another one to kind of illustrate that when you see that big bearish engulfing signal, you just stay short until you see a buy signal and a close back up above the key line. So with these market conditions where we can't really tell what's going to happen from here, the best thing would be to see it open positive and start trading as another J-hook to the upside. And the reason we would suspect that could happen is looking at what happened in the, uh, uh, the NAS or what's happening in the NASDAQ. This is why this uptrend is fairly solid. You have four or five weeks of up trading, profit taking. Four or five weeks of up trading, profit taking. Four or five weeks, profit taking. Four or five weeks, profit taking. So we haven't seen a sell signal yet. Uh, notice what we have up here in the overbought area. Didn't confirm this sell signal, stayed above the T line. This isn't a sell signal. Let me make this bigger. This is just a down day and an uptrend, and the next two days are kind of indecisive. So it's going to make the trading very simple tomorrow. If we wake up and the pre-market futures are showing the NASDAQ's up 15 points, that tells me getting ready for our next wave to the upside. Oh, I didn't pull up some of our positions. AMD, there's your dark cloud. There's your hanging man. There's your bearish confirmation. You should have been out of this trade right here. More than likely, they're going to bring this back down to the 50, which is where they supported before. So you shouldn't be in it. And because of the analysis of what is the direction of your trend, 
obviously an uptrend. And where is it supporting? At the 50, at the 50. So if it got back down here to the 50, I would definitely watch to see when the next buy signals. Uh, Bob, the meaty book is High Profit Candlestick Patterns. I would start with that one. And then to get more solidified uh, confirmation, go backwards to the um, Profitable Candlestick Trading, which was the first book. That's got all the signals in it. And then uh, the final one is the uh, Candlestick Profits, Eliminating Emotions. That's that's kind of the, uh, you know, the bringing everything together where even if you were able to identify the best signals in the world, if you don't have control of your emotions, uh, it's, it's still going to kill you. So uh, uh, Jason, I used to do that also. But I've discovered that you try to, instead of getting ahead of it without the confirmation, doesn't really do you any good because if 50% of the time it doesn't work and 50% of the time it does work, not ahead. I would rather wait, be a little bit late, and know that my probabilities are extremely strong in the direction that I expect it to move. Remember, buying at the very bottom and selling at the very top is an extremely low probability situation. Grabbing the fat part in the middle with a high degree of probability, if you do that, the compounding effect of being in many more correct trades is going to be much more stronger uh, uh, for you. Can you repeat the candlestick book, please? The first book I would go after is High Profit Candlestick Patterns. That has a green cover. They're on our website. Just go to the uh, uh, products and services. Um, the second book was the first book I wrote, which was High Profit Candlestick, no, Profitable Candlestick Trading. That will take you backwards, but it will give you more of a complete uh, background of all the signals and the psychology of candlestick analysis. And then the third book was. Candlestick Profits, Eliminating Emotions. Um, that one will kind of show you, if you use the probabilities of the candlestick signals, that they, it kind of builds in. If you follow what the candlestick signals and patterns tell you, you start eliminating or reducing your emotional decision-making. Uh, CJ, I will have, uh, let me see. I don't know if they've put that, to packaged it. As soon as I get it, I'll, uh, put it in the uh, chat room. Yeah, the, the ones on Amazon, they're, they're charging full price for a couple of them, like 98 bucks. Um. Get them for forty-seven bucks or so on the uh, on our link. Okay. Any other general questions on candlesticks? Also, remember, we're trying. If you haven't been in the two-day trading, get get in it. It's uh, and I'm not trying to push this on people, but I know what it works most effectively for people learning candlesticks. Is that two-day training gives you the whole gamut of what you should be looking for as far as signals and patterns, the entry and exit strategies, the stop losses, the scanning techniques, uh, not because of the mechanics of it, but just uh, once you have to see everything in a chronological order, just the uh, concept of how the how prices move will become much more solidified. So when you come back to a session like this, after you've seen this uh, uh, 
um, do the two-day training, everything becomes uh, reinforcement to what you learn versus trying to learn it. Um, yeah, we will be doing another uh, live training session up at Cuca Lake uh, probably the first week of August this year. And RC, uh, this will be online. Um, if, and once you once you pay for a two-day training session, then you can come back for any of them for free for a refresher course. And I, I uh, when I used to do a lot of live trainers, uh, Houston, Texas had a big investment community. So I was between Dallas and Houston. I was probably doing four or five live training where I'd go to clubs and do a, a training and I would have people show up five six seven eight times and so finally I asked them I said don't you get bored with this stuff uh, and you've seen it eight times already and they said no every time we see it we something else sinks in uh, that we've seen before but it becomes much more clear when we've seen it again so uh, that's kind of the, the, uh, the rationale of a two-day training. Everything we go through, which we will go through in great detail, you have already seen. But when you see it in a chronological order, it all starts making it makes a lot more sense. And uh, you can apply it with a much more accuracy. You don't have to be a long-time, sophisticated uh, Technical analysts, candlestick signals are just common sense built into graphics. So with that, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 4.2 seconds, do the second double line. Let's see, coming in and out of my microphone. All right, let me try that. So anyways, uh, just a final, if you're thinking about doing the session, get in there because we want to get as many uh, members in uh, versus uh, non-members just because obviously the members have at least a little bit of background and what's going on and it, it's much more, I think, beneficial. Johnson & Johnson. Not a very dynamic stock, but obviously uh, had a nice price move. Now you have to watch to see what it does here at the T-line to see whether it's doing a J-hook pattern or ready to come back down through the through the T-line. DK was the other one we recommended today. You can see kind of the fry pan bottom setup here. So we were looking for it to kind of break out through this level. You can still be buying this one on positive trading. We did NOVN. If you didn't buy it today, get ready to buy it on positive trading tomorrow. Your fry pan bottom doji sandwich breakout. And Kinder or Kindred. This becomes very simple. There's your bearish harami right on the 200-day moving average in the overbought area. If it opens lower tomorrow, you close out the position immediately. Take your profits. It's going to probably come back and test the T-line to do a bobble pattern. Wait to see what it does here. If it uh, if it breaks down through that level, then you're probably coming back to the 50. If it holds the T-line and starts back up, you get ready to buy it when it comes back up through the 200. Uh, that means it's done a bobble breakout. Last week we discussed buying in pre and after market, which you said 99% of the time you don't. Don't trade, but this morning GALT was up 30% in pre-market, almost from nine, from eight to nine o'clock, and they opened it up only eight percent. Would this be one of those times I should have sold in the pre-market? Let's take a gander here. Uh, 
Oh, uh, you wouldn't have known. I mean, the fact that they are opening up positive after a doji would have told you uh, you've got the potential of kind of a scoop pattern set up, so you wouldn't have really have known to, because for all you knew uh, was uh, that they could have opened it up here, gapped it up, and kept it. Uh, kept right on going. Now, the fact that they brought it back down through here tells you you've only got one thing to do. It has to open positive and trade positive tomorrow to stay in it. When I was so trading back in 1999-2000, there was one company, I can't even remember the name of it, but I am pretty sure, and I can't remember the numbers, but they were astronomical. I think the stock closed at 16. And then there was an article in the Wall Street Journal about how they had gotten a lot closer to a cure for cancer. And obviously we were there, most of us getting ready before the market, and this thing was skyrocketing pre-market. I think it went up to like $98 in the pre-market. And uh, obviously we could trade it because it was over the counter. And we got in and, in and out of it a couple times during that move. But that was about a half an hour before the market opened. When the market opened, I think it opened back at around 40 and then proceeded to sell off for the rest of the day. So if you're trading pre-market, you still have to be just as careful because you might have something like Apple that trades, whatever, 7.5 million shares during the day, but it could move around big percentages on just a few thousand shares after hours because there's nobody trading it. You're, you're hitting the bid and the ask. So you've got to be careful trading after hours unless it's something that you see or were expecting that somebody came out with an announcement you were expecting and was trading up after or before the market opened, that's when I'd go after it. But uh, yeah, when you see something gap up pre-market, it may be that it was 500 shares bought something up 8, 10, 12, 15 percent versus the, the big, big volume. Uh, Costco, the gap down looks like it didn't hold the 50. My next uh, target would be somewhere in this area, which would be getting close to the 200-day uh, uh, moving average. Noble stays short. If they open it lower, breaking kind of this range in here, you're still heading down. If you're looking to go long, obviously there's, there's no reason to be going long on this one. Uh, C, same scenario, bearish J-hook pattern. When they gap it down and they can't get back up through the T-line slash 50, you're right here in this support level. If they break it down, your next target is filling this gap down here. Dillard's, stay short. Where did it fail? Right here at the 50. Got to get back up above the T-line? Nope. Kind of broke this down trending channel. You stay short. And HCLP, another one where you have to watch diligently what they do tomorrow. If they open this lower, they're having a hard time getting back up through the T-line. If they trade it higher, then you watch to see what they do with the 50 because you can see where the 50 was acting as support. Usually when they fall through a support level, they'll come back up and see if that acts as a resistance level. Ruth's big move, I would suspect, a 45 degree off of here. Hertz. Uh, it closed back below the T-line slash 50. If you were in it, 
I'd seriously be getting out of it on any type of weakness tomorrow. As you can see what the trend is, not very uh, prolific. It needed to break out of this, this trading range. So there's nothing there right now that would get me real excited about uh, being long or short. For some reason, SBLK just does not come up on this chart service. Stay long, bearish engulfing signal, which means you still have to stay up above the, uh, the T-line to stay in this. ILMN uh, lost a little bit of its steam here. Another one that has to open positive and trade positive. You had kind of a kicker type breakout, but it needs to open positive. If it starts trading below the T line, that's going to put you back into this trading range, which tells you it's not really doing much of anything. Light. You can get ready to buy this one if it opens positive tomorrow. Uh, the only reason you might see it wobble in here is because your stochastics aren't quite in the oversold area. So my criteria would be I'd want to see it close above the T-line and then see it open positive after that. Labu backed off, didn't change direction, just kind of backed off. It's still in this uptrending channel as long as it stays above the T-line. And Momo, whoops, Momop. Uh, it has to open positive, and it needs to break through this level. This is one of the things you kind of want to watch for. But if you see a pattern setting up, like a J-hook pattern, notice our doji sandwich, gap up. The fact that they've brought it down, they haven't closed it below the T-line. Today they closed it right on the T-line. If they trade it lower, this J-hook pattern potential has disappeared, and now you've got kind of a wedge-type formation. It tells you there's really no strength one way or the other. You want to get out of it. And uh, uh, Weight Watchers, notice it's pulling back. I would probably use this level right here as my stop, and I'd use this level right here as a buy. If it came back up through there, the uh, profit taking is over, but you would suspect there'd be more upside by a 45 degree based upon this big gap up, break out through this range. And dust, nice fry pan bottom, which tells you gold is still heading lower. See what gold was doing today. Gold's backing off. Where is it probably backing off to? Back to the 50 day moving average. And BCRX, there's your belt hold signal. And there's your breakout. So you stay long until you see a sell signal. If you've gotten up in the overbought area just as a safety factor. I'd put my sell stop right here below the low of today. If it has enough strength to come back through that level, uh, the sellers have taken control. The profit taking started. Another one that had a J-hook pattern set up but closed back below the uh, – T-line, if this opens lower tomorrow, I'd close it out because that tells me I'm in a slow drifting channel, probably coming back to the uh, uh, back to the 50-day moving average. Panera, same scenario. This one, probably now, I, well, I wouldn't be long or short. I wouldn't be paying attention to it until it breaks up through this level. Uh, it needs to break out. The uh, Miners, stay short so you see a buy signal. Cuervo, nothing here. Uh, I wouldn't be long or short. Didn't confirm a sell signal, the bearish engulfing signal, and you're not above the T-line. I would be someplace else right now.
just no direction to it. Tazar, you stay short until you see a buy signal. Not a great looking chart, but in this case, if you're short, you stay short. Nugget is still in a downtrend. Just stay short until you see a buy signal. Caterpillar, Caterpillar is still one that uh, doesn't have any great direction to it either. I wouldn't be trading Caterpillar. There's nothing there. And ELGX, same scenario. This one needed to get back up above the key line today. So with the closing here, more than likely what it's telling you is you're probably going to move sideways for about the same time frame as this. I wouldn't be a buyer now until it breaks up through the whatever this is, 7.15 or so. AKAO, I think we did. Just stay long, as long as it stays above the T line. DSL, another one. You can see the wedge formation. I wouldn't be long or short this one right now. That's a decent looking chart. Uh, is that a question? Does it cover options too? Uh, the uh, uh, the two day session. We don't do options specifically, but we always kind of uh, I in, refer to doing option trades on specific patterns um, as well as stock trades. Uh, BIOS, whoops, this is a perfect example of a gap up, doji, if it opened positive you could be buying with the expectation it was going to come up here to the 200, the fact that it didn't get to the 200 tells us now the next target is right there, um, or it didn't close below the 200. Next target is filling the gap. IONS, uh, with that shooting star at this level, you get ready to short this one on weakness tomorrow. Well, fold, stay long. You're in the 45 degree. And NVRO probably coming back to test the 50. There's your hanging man doji closed below the T line, double doji, uh, bearish double doji. I would suspect it's coming back at least down to the 50. And WLK, no, I wouldn't short this one. You're still not even below the T line, and you're not seeing any real dynamic selling. I would. I would stay long as long as this one stays above the T-line. Bank of America, you can stay long. It's just not a very exciting stock, but you can stay long as long as this stays above the T-line. Office Depot, that's not a real good-looking chart either. Notice, again, that this was not quite a kicker signal. So that's why you've heard me in the past say if it's not, quite a signal, just be a little bit more leery of the first selling. Can I download the two-day to my computer and review over and over? Yes. Yeah, if you come and come to the session, or if you can't sit through the whole session, yes, it'll be, uh, It's it, Jim will be recording it, and it will be available. Uh, the first, first day will be ready that night. Second day, both of them will be ready that night. And that's kind of the whole purpose, that you go through it live. If there's stuff that didn't sink in, you go back and review the, uh, the videos. LXU, another one that you probably should be out of with the big move to the upside. And then they've, they're coming back down into the range and close below the T-line. I would have been back out of it today. Edwards, 
stay short. There's your kind of your slow curve breakdown. I'm going to put a little star next to that one. And PTX got a fry pan bottom, but you're kind of in the bobble stage right now. If I was going to be buying this one, I'd probably be looking for it to come back up uh, through the 200. Just nothing right now that looks real intriguing on this one. Micron, stay long on this one. STX. Stay long, but it has to open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, close it out. And you've run out of steam on that trend. When we see a big move, say 8%, then they expect a 45 degree, then we expect a 45 degree after. Can we have expectation of a 45 to give us uh Sylvain, no, have no idea. All we know is that once it makes this move, it has a 45 degree coming off of it. Um, and all you can do at that point is stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. But what you do have is a high probability that you're going to be in a 45 degree. You don't know how long it will last. But usually they're, they're significant. That big gap up, especially off a of doji gap up, best friend, is one of your strongest signals. That's uh, uh, probably the first one I illustrate in the quantified training, which, which signals are the strongest. Mobley has to open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, you've lost, lost kind of the trajectory. Marathon, you can be buying this. It needs to break out of this downtrending channel. You have the buy signals, left, right combo left right combo if it opens positive just watch then to see what it does at the 50 day moving average to see if it gets through brx stay short brs uh if you're if you're short now you watch to see what it does here at the 200 so i would if i was short i would be using today's high as my stop it shouldn't come back up through that level CLFD, nice bullish engulfing. I would expect a pop back up to the uh, the moving averages. SAEX, you can be buying this one with it trying to break out through this downtrending channel. Again, watch to see what it does once it gets to the 50-day uh, moving average. XIV, stay long, nice little J-hook. CSX, you can stay long on this. It needs to break out. And as you can see, it doesn't have a whole real dynamic uh, chart. Uh, again, being an institutional trader, it, it doesn't move around very much. HLIT, stay long. Work. Yes, you can get ready to go short on this one. You got kind of a little rollover here. If it opens lower, again, your next target probably is going to be the 200-day uh, moving average. That's a good looking short. PNA. Also has to open positive to even maintain a, uh, a sideways mode, and that's pretty much what the Russell 2000 is telling you. Is that they need to open positive to maintain this. Okay, one more. IBM, the quintessential institutional trader. Ah, nothing real exciting to trade. If you're in this for long term, you just stay long. Use the 50-day moving average. An amber combi, nothing. It broke out and failed. So 
Again, this is the perfect example of if this is your signal telling you the bulls are taking control, they shouldn't be closing back below the halfway point of that candle. Okay, that's about it. We'll call it a night. We'll see everybody bright and early in the morning in the chat room. We'll see you then.